Hey, this is Angie Wachowski, and you are listening to Bet On You Radio. This show is about risk takers, not people who just take all their money out of their bank and go to the casino and bet on red 21 on the roulette wheel, and in one spin, they either win big or they lose big. That's not the type of risk we're talking about. We're talking about risk takers who are brave enough to confront something in their life. Maybe it's a fear, maybe it's an apprehension, but they make a conscious choice to live their life with intention. And today's guest is no exception. I am so excited to have Molly Russell Henderson here today in the studio. I remember Molly from growing up in Kalkaska. So she had my mom as her eighth grade English teacher, my dad as her high school principal, and she was one of my sister's best friends and still is actually to this day. So I imagine my relationship with Molly was this annoying younger sister. And I remember many things about Molly, like she was a picky eater. When she'd come to our house, she never really wanted to eat anything. Mm -hmm. We'll get there, there's a story there. (laughs) And uh, she also didn't have a dad in her life. And I just remember her, you know, not making it a thing, but it was certainly a big thing and a bigger thing as uh, we, grew up together and she grew into adulthood. So today's story is really about Molly journeying back into her childhood and finding out this really important fact about her life. So I am not going to go any further, Molly. Thank you so much for coming yes, here today. Thanks for having me. Do you mind kicking off just starting about your childhood and of course that amazing little sister of one of your best friends? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, I grew up in Kalkaska. I was the baby of seven. So there were, uh, I had four brothers, or I'm sorry, four sisters and two brothers. Um, You know, my mom was a single mom, but um, we, you know, we had a great, I had a great childhood. Um, You know, a lot of family gatherings, lots of laughter, lots of love. Um, It was just, um, it was almost, I don't want to sound cliche, but it was kind of the perfect childhood, to be honest. I love hearing that. And again, seven siblings, are you the baby? Yes, I was the baby. Were you babied? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I could do no wrong and I always got whatever I wanted. Oh, so. well, that's the perfect I know. Situation. That was perfect. Yes. Yeah. And a fun fact about all of us is um, we all start, all of our names start with them. I don't know if you ever knew that. I did not know that. Yeah, what so. was the thinking behind that? It was obviously your um, mom's choice. Yeah. So my mom's name was Myrna, which, you know, starts with an M. And so then she just kept it going down the line. So oh, how old is your, how much older was your oldest sibling? Um, she is... I think she was 15 when I was born. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So like from 15 to 6, there were six of them. And then you and then the me. baby. The baby. Mm-hmm. And what did your mom do growing up? Single um, mom? You know, she she had several jobs that I can remember. Um, she worked for the village at one point. Um, the majority of my childhood, though, she worked in a factory, a uh, craft house. I'm sure you remember that in Kalkaska. Oh, Kaskaska. yeah. We'd go tour it. Yeah. It's yeah. part of our field trips. Yes, we did. So, yeah. Yep. She worked there until uh, – right until she was in the – you know, she got sick. And so um, she retired from there, but um, she worked all the time. So, And this is really going to be the central point of the story. You didn't have a dad growing up. You didn't even Correct. know who your dad was growing right. up. Yep. Nope. I So I had always thought that – um, my sibling's dad was my dad and, um, and just cause they made it feel like I was theirs hundred percent. And it wasn't until I was about, I don't know, probably 12 or 13 that I just really noticed that, you know, I didn't look like any of them. Um, I was different in, in every category. Like I was into sports. No one else in my family played sports. Um, I was a super picky eater. No one else was a picky eater. Like just so many different things. And I, it just all kind of started clicking to me. And and then finally I asked my cousin and she told me, their dad is not your dad. And I said, oh. So like up until that part in my life, I always thought that he was my dad. It's always a cousin, isn't it? It is. And Somebody she, tells you about Santa Claus. That's right. It's a cousin, <laughs> 100%. But I'm glad she did. I mean, um, she, she just told me that, you know – their dad is not yours and we don't know who your dad is. And so I, I never really, um, I never really thought about it much after that. I didn't really visit it a whole lot. I just kind of, oh, okay, whatever. Um, you know, because I was busy, you know, being a teenager and being in sports, being being, in in everything, you know? And so, um, about when I think I was like 21, um, I had my daughter, Elena, and she was very ill. And my doctor, her doctor said, 
I need to have your dad's uh, health information. And I said, I don't know it. And she says, you need to find out. So I went to my mom and I asked her and she didn't give me the answer I was hoping for. And so I never asked her again. (laughs) So So you held on to that for a long time then with your mom without being confrontational about Mm -hmm. it or angry about it or just very accepting of it. That's pretty mature. Yeah. Yeah. I was, you know, I was like, okay, well, obviously she just didn't want me to know. So never asked again. And then unfortunately she passed when I was 26. So um, Mm -hmm. right, right after she passed, I kind of felt, I was like, okay, now I feel it's okay for me to start looking. And um, so I kind of was looking But I always come to a dead end, you know, because I didn't really know who I was looking for. It was just, you know, my older sibling saying, I think it was this guy, you know. And not that my mom had a bunch of boyfriends because she never did, but she she never told anyone. So it was like, you know, okay, so I know that – I know she went on a date with this one. I know she went on a date with this one. And so we – I really had – no information to go on. And that would be an awkward conversation, right? So you and yeah. my mom, yeah. was it, what was it, just dating yeah. or? <laughs> exactly. What, what did you guys do together? Yeah. 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 So so I finally, I waited, waited, waited. Um, do you remember that day? Like you're like, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to oh, invest yes. in this. 100% because I had foot surgery and I had to be laid up for 12 weeks. And so my sister bought me a DNA kit and she said, here you go, find your dad. So I did. And um, I... As soon as my matches came in, I looked at all the matches and I kind of like threw my iPad away to the side and I was like, I don't see anyone by the name of who I thought my dad was because again, it was always thought of a different man than who it turned out to be. Um, So I wasn't real into it at first, but then literally this lady caught my eye, her eyes caught my eye and I was like, oh my gosh, her eyes are just like mine. And so I messaged her and within a day, she messaged me back and she was like my third cousin. And she said, you know, she said, uh, I, I think I knew who your dad is, but I'm going to have to talk to some family members first before I give you any information. And so how did that feel? Oh, it was amazing. And, <laughs> and I remember like laying in bed, it was like two 30 in the morning and she gave me the name of who it could be. Um, and again, not to, you know, sound rash, but like my, my mom isn't around, you know, she wasn't around for me to ask, okay, so which one of the brothers? So my cousin gave me, oh, you're either Mike's daughter or you're Bill's daughter. And so of course, Facebook, I'm like, look, and I was like, oh my, I hit Andy. I'm like, Andy, I look just like him. And so, you know, it, that, that was amazing, you know, to be able to, finally connect my looks, my identity, basically, I guess, with someone because, again, I look nothing like my brothers and sisters that raised me. So anyways, um, she she did get back in touch with me and she said um, she had been going through some family members and they said, you know, go ahead and, you know, help her find her dad. And so she was sending me pictures of, you know, this is what, you know, either Mike or Bill, whichever one is your father, um, this is what they looked like. And, um, she sent this picture to me and it was my, um, my dad, his brother, uh, so my uncle, my two uncles. And one of the, the uncles was a spitting image of me. I mean, it actually, there was a picture of me and Jenny that my I sister. your sister that I sent to my aunt and I said look at me in this picture I look just like my my uncle Ty and so um so yeah so I contacted my uncle Ty and he was actually sitting at the dinner table with um my dad Mike and said hey you know there's there's a girl and she thinks you know that you could be her father and you know would you be okay with meeting her and so he's a you know, very busy businessman. And he told Ty to tell me if I could be there in two days down in Moline, Illinois, he would agree to see me. So, which is kind of crazy. And this is a part of the story that I like to kind of connect some important facts. You grew up in a family, in a small home with seven Mm -hmm. children Mm -hmm. and you weren't rich. Not at all. We were extremely poor. Like never had a phone, never had a car. Um, you know, when we grocery shopped, we walked to the grocery store, um, unless my grandma or my aunts and uncles would help us out. And, and then my older siblings, as they got to be older and they worked, they would get a car and let my mom take it. But my mom, you know, she, she never really had much. And, uh, we always had a roof over our head and we always had food in the house, but that was the extent of it. And, um, 
Tell us about your dad. Yeah. So one of the reasons that they were kind of um, holding back on me was because he was a very successful businessman, which meant that he was, you know, on the wealthier side. And so my second cousin, third cousin, um, Susan, she said, you know, I just want to let you know that with him having the money that he has and the success that he had, you know, throughout the years, he's going to be a little standoffish. And, and I understood that. But, um, but yeah, so um, a fun fact about my dad was, um, I don't know if anyone remembers the show uh, Dallas, where... J.R. Ewing? Ewing would fly in on a helicopter. That's what my dad did in the early 70s into Kalkaska. So that's... So your dad is like J.R. Ewing. He basically. is. That's, that's what we say. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. But um, he, he and his brother, my Uncle Bill, uh, had a very successful pipeline company called Murphy Brothers. Um, and then that went on to many other different companies. But that was the most successful one. So yeah. So it was, you know, kind of bizarre when I found out. I was like... Hmm. Okay. Well, you had said during break that you think about your mom and her having nothing. Yes. And then she obviously made a conscious choice. I mean, we can only assume. Right. To yeah. not make that connection. And mm -hmm. again, I'm sure your dad was just as surprised to discover that he had a daughter. Yes, he was. As you were just as surprised to find out that this is who your dad was. Right. Yeah. 100%. What was it like to see your dad for the first time? Um, it was, I honestly don't even have, I can't even put it into words. Like when, when he rounded the corner, because at this point in time, I still didn't know that he was 100% my dad. Um, cause we hadn't, we hadn't, um, had the DNA test yet. So, um, the, when I first met him, we went and had dinner and I just, everything about him was me. I mean, his little quirks, his, uh, just his hands, everything. I was like, it was like looking at a mirror. And then the next day we had our DNA test. And so that took about two, and well, actually it took longer than that. It probably took about a month. So once I really found out that he was my dad, then like, I, I like to say, like I had to write something about this. And I, um, I like to say that, you know, I was born on March 2nd, 1974, but um, I found my identity on, you know, July 26, 2018, because that's when I found out who I really was. So. Oh, that is yeah. amazing to yeah. think about it that way. Yeah. What does that do for you as an adult? Does it confirm you? Does it validate you? Does 100%. it connect you? Yep. 100%. It answered so many questions. That missing piece that I always had that sometimes maybe I didn't know that I had missing, um, I 100% felt complete. Like, um, I... Again, I don't know how to explain it. It's just it's just a feeling that you have. And when I met him, I was like, okay, now I know who I am. And I know where I get this from. And I know where I get this from and that. And, um, you know, it, it really answered a bunch of questions for me. So, And when we come back, I want to talk about the other heroes in the story, too. And that was the family. Yes. So let us take a quick break and okay. we will come back with Molly. Hey everyone, this is Angie Wachowski. I'm one of the co-authors of Bet On You. This is the companion to the radio program. So if you're enjoying what you're listening to, check out this book. Inside there's some really great guidance and a code that takes you to an online platform that helps you dream better and imagine ways that you can bet on yourself. Check it out. This is Angie Wachowski, and you're listening to Bet On You Radio, and we've got an amazing guest, Molly Russell Henderson, who's talking about finding her dad and discovering that missing piece in her life and how it makes you feel complete. So we were going to talk about the reunion because it wasn't just you discovering your dad because your dad had a family as well, and I think a lot of families can go a variety of different ways with mm -hmm. accepting a new member to their family that and just had been revealed to them. Right. Talk about that because now you've got uncles, you've got siblings, yes. you yes. have, I guess, a mom, mm -hmm. <laughs> another mom. Right. Yeah, for sure. Talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So they were all very receptive. Um, of course, they were a little, you know, yielded. They held back a little bit, meaning when I say that, I mean my brother and my sister. Um, but they came around and um, it was when I first met them, 
because, you know, things just kept falling into place. And so I met my sister in August of 2019. And it was quite funny because so my brother my brother lived in Moline, Illinois for a bit too. And so he had a hotel there, the Hyatt. And so all of us were going to the Hyatt to stay. And um, it was called the Murphy Bend and stuff like that. So that was kind of cool. Um, but my sister actually made plans because she really didn't know how our meeting was going to work out. So but long story short, we met and she didn't want to leave. And so she canceled oh. all of her plans and she said, I just want to sit with you. Like, And it was like we never missed a beat. So um, it was Another amazing. sibling. Another <laughs> no, sibling. Another like sister. <laughs> yep. Another sister. And another fun fact is this sister has the same birthday as the sister I was raised with. So and they're the same oh, age. So that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. But everyone was very receptive. My uncles, aunts, um, all my cousins, my nieces, my nephews. Uh, we have a very huge family. So I love this story. And my greatest hope is that you continue to take the risk in telling the story and putting it yes. in a book because it is just we get a tease here, folks, and there's an amazing story there. And then Truly. I want to transition because I love to ask my guests just five you know, questions that mm -hmm. hopefully can share us more insight into who you are and what wisdom you have yes. to pass to us. So first question, share a book that inspired you. Um, so as I said earlier, um, I would have to say um, I'm more of a podcast girl. So I'm going to say that um, anything Oprah or actually there are several books by Brene Brown that i I just love. Um, oh, she's a genius. She, unfortunately, I hear them all, or not unfortunate, but I hear them all on podcast side. So, um, but yes, between her and Oprah's um, soul. Super Soul Super Sunday? Soul, yeah. Between Amazing. the two of them, it's it's kind of a toss-up, so. Yeah, I would, ha I would hate to pick between those two as yeah. well. So, okay. So share a piece of feedback that was illuminating to you. Just Looking. like in general? Yeah, just or something like, that like stuck with you. Okay. Like through this journey or? Through this journey, through in life. Okay. Um, I would have to say I have a coworker who um, I was, there was some issues going on and um, I don't really want to say issues, but um, there, there were some things going on with my daughter and I was unaccepting and she you know after weeks and weeks of me just you know being defiant about it and not even wanting to talk about it my coworker sat me down and she said Molly this is nothing it could be so much worse like you could be dealing with so much more with your daughter than what you're dealing with she said you know she could be having children for you to take care of left and right she could be unfortunately you know a you know, an addict and you're helping her with all of that. If this is all she has right now for you, I think you're okay. And I, that still is just like a, a light bulb that, you know what, it could be so much worse. Like in There's a big any picture. aspect, yeah. you know, not just in that particular moment or my moment or, you know, whatever, just in general, it could be so much worse. So... So again, it's a challenge. Yes. And mm -hmm. it could be worse. Thank you yep. for that. I'd love to hear from you. What's your favorite activity in the community? What do you love doing here in Northern Michigan? Um, well. I mean, we're Facebook friends. I know you like yes. on the shorts. Yeah, we, we go to breweries. <laughs> we, we really enjoy our breweries. Um, I, I, I like hanging out with family and friends. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of my really good friends has the Naughty Cat. So that's usually always one of the things oh, that we do. Great. And um, just – you know, hanging out. I love being outdoors. So, you know, um, hiking, biking, snowshoeing in the winter, any oh, of that. True. I love to stay active and I love to be outdoors. So I love it. Yeah. Okay. So this is a fun fact about you and I expect your answer to be your food truck, but not <laughs> only are you a risk taker in life, but you actually are an entrepreneur. So what's your favorite place to eat in this region? Hoping you're saying your food truck on the Twin Birch Golf Course. I'm going to say I would like to say that, but it's really short. <laughs> <laughs> but our but summer gig is a close second, so we'll say that. So, yeah, stop by a food truck at the Twin Birch Golf, Birch yeah. Golf Course in Kalkaska. Okay, last question. Mm -hmm. What's one thing you've learned in life that's really important for you to share with other people? Um, just, you know, take that chance. Take the leap. Just just take it because I almost didn't and 
like when I threw my iPad away, you know, to the side, I, I just, I was like, I don't even want to, I don't even want to look at this DNA stuff. But had I not taken the chance and just talked myself into it, I would have never been able to meet my dad. And, you know, at the end of the day, meeting him, even though he passed, unfortunately, you know, after I met him, um, at least I got a year. And, you know, like I always say, it could have been worse. So, yeah. Yeah. So I just say, take the chance in anything. Like, yeah. I love that guidance. And if you're listening to this, I know you've got a dream, an idea, an aspiration. And guess what? You are worth the risk. Thank you again, yes. Molly, yes, for being you. here. Thank you, WTCM, for our hosting Bet on You Radio. And thank you all for listening. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.